I am Leah. I'm so excited that you're here today. Jesus is teaching us. He's teaching us truth so that we can be ready that day to move in with him. Let's acknowledge him. Jesus, we thank you for telling us truth. Thank you for preparing us, giving us the revelation knowledge of knowing how to stand before you that day and be accepted. We love you. We praise you and give you all the glory. So we were talking about the sons of disobedience um, would experience God's wrath. Not exactly in those words, but um, I was looking up what he was wanting me to talk about today, to talk more about that. And um, eternal wrath. This is a final wrath of God unleashed upon those who die without grace. When they are sent to an everlasting hell, and then it gives the scriptures that we see that in. And I want to read to you some of what is said and then talk a little bit about how you can just really experience God's wrath here rather than there, rather than when it's too late. So we're going to Revelation 20, verse 11. Let's start with verse 11. Is that where we're going? Then I saw a great white throne, and the one who was seated upon it, from whose presence and from the sight of whose faith, face, earth, and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. I also saw the dead, the great and the small. They stood before the throne, and books were opened. Then the book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged, sentenced by what they had done. Their whole way of feeling and acting, their aims and endeavors in accordance with what was recorded in the books. And the sea delivered up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades, the state of death, surrendered the dead in them, and they were tried, and their cases determined by what they had done according to their motives, aims, and works. And then the dead, the death and Hades, the state of death, were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone na anyone's name was not found recorded in the book of life, he was hurled into the lake of fire. Now we're going to go to Revelation 14, 11. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no respite. This is what it's like in hell. And there's no respite, no pause, no intermission, no rest, no peace day or night. Those who pay homage to the beast and to his image and whoever receives a stamp of his name upon them. Upon him. Here comes in a call for the steadfastness of the saints, the patient, the endurance of the people who habitually keep God's commandments and their faith in Jesus. And then um, it's also mentioned in Matthew, Matthew 25. Then he will say to those at his left, Be gone from me, you curse into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, you did not welcome me and entertain me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me with help in ministering care. Then they also in their turn will answer the Lord. When did we see you hungry, thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, and did not minister you? And did not minister to you? And he will reply to them, Solemnly I declare to you, so as far as you fail to do for the least, in estimation of men of these you fail to do for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment. It's just a few mentioned places where if we, we don't obey God, we haven't chosen him, and we'll, we will live in eternal damnation. And so you want to obey him. You know, um, when I started growing up in the Lord and I disobeyed him, I started to see another side of him. And um, the first time he, he was a little rough with me is when I was putting things off. 
and he, he said, I'm coming sooner than you think. He's concerned. He's coming, and we're not ready. That's what we've been talking about over and over again. And he's giving me an assignment to help prepare the way for him. And I was putting it off. I thought I had lots of time. And he said, I'm coming sooner than you think. And then the next time he corrected me, it was audible. And um, he told me that I was in jeopardy of, lo of losing my salvation because I didn't obey him. I put it off again. I was on a break because I didn't want to do what he wanted me to do. But the thing is, I promised him that I would do anything he asked me to do. I said I would. And so he was depending on me. And it's what I was created to do. And one of those things is what I'm doing right now, telling you things to come. He said he would tell us things to come, and he is. And so anyway, at that point, he was showing me that because I wasn't doing what he said, I was like one of the five foolish virgins. And I'd be knocking at the door, and he would say, I wasn't acquainted with you. And it was scary. It was an audible correction. It made me really scared. And then I forgot again. I forgot again. And I didn't forget so much as I started um, just, just falling because of persecution and didn't seem like anybody wanted to hear what I had to say. And it was just hard. It was just really hard. The enemy was pulling to get me to stop doing the will of God. And, you know, this is in any area that you're not doing the will of God. you got to do his will or you are disobeying him and you will experience his wrath. The last time I heard him, it was really scary. Um, it, w it was audible. I, I was pulled straight up out of bed at a tension on the edge of my bed. I wasn't in control of anything. And I knew Jesus was standing there. I couldn't see him with my physical eyes. And then I heard, the hour of Jesus has come. And then on the inside of me, I heard, come up. What does that mean, Lord? And he said, it's a time of great testing. I was really scared. And I knew that I hadn't been doing my assignment I, I knew exactly what he was referring to. And then two days later, I heard him audibly again. And he said that he was frustrated. He was frustrated. And then he said, obey me. And those were both also audible. And I had thought, I blew it. I'm going to hell. Because my last warning, that's what he was saying. I wasn't going to make it. And so I, I was just getting really depressed. And he said, this isn't the time to quit and give up, but to keep going. And so ever since, I have been going strong and telling people, even though it doesn't look like it, that Jesus is coming. But my point today is you will see God's wrath in your life now if you don't obey him. And it's better to be corrected now when you have time to do something about it, this is a time of grace. Remember what we read here. It said, eternal wrath is the final wrath of God unleashed upon those who die without grace. This is a time of grace. And, when they, and then they're sent to everlasting hell. This is a time to get it right. Jesus said, not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. And many are going to say, but Lord, I did this, I did that. And he's going to say, I didn't know you. He warned me I was going to be on the other side of the door. And he's, he's going to say, I'm not acquainted with you because we aren't doing his will. Because we're disobedient. I'm so glad I was tested now. That I was corrected now. Revelation 3.19. He said he corrects those that he loves. Get corrected now. How do you do that? Be open to correction. Don't ignore him. I always tell them, correct me, correct me, correct me. Correct me, Lord, because I want to live 
in heaven with him forever. I don't want to live in hell. You know, so many people are afraid of scaring other people um, by telling them about hell. But wouldn't you rather know than not know and go to hell? Don't you want your loved ones to know? Jesus does. That's why he spoke it over and over again. You got to make a choice. If you don't choose God, it's not that you're not chosen. It's that you chose eternal damnation. If you don't obey him, he can't take care of you. He can't, he can't save you. And that's why he gets so angry. That's why he was frustrated with me. And he said, obey me or I'm not going to be able to save you from eternal damnation because he's no respect of persons. He can't change one law for one person. He, he can't change his law for one person. Only Noah and his family got on the ark because he obeyed God. He did what God said. He did every detail of what God said. And he's saying that to us today. If you obey me, I can save you. Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, I'm knocking at the door of your heart. And if you heed my voice, I'm going to come and live on the inside of you. If you don't heed his voice, then he can't come and live on the inside of you because you're not on the same page and you've taken then the mark of the beast you've made the choice so that's the word I have for you today learn God's wrath now and you know if you ask him to correct you and you don't do it and he gets angry with you and you feel that it's scary it's really really scary but I'd rather feel that than feel his wrath on that day than to be thrown into the lake of fire that never ends where there's no respite make the right choice it's really not that hard to obey him because he really helps you do it just help me Lord help me to obey you that's all you gotta say and he will because he loves you you just need it he needs you to have a willing heart you gotta have a willing heart so John 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word is God so he is his word so what you want to do is get to know his word he's knocking at the door of your heart so you want to heed his voice and you can't do that without knowing his word many think they can just say a prayer and that's it that's not it you got to know the word and come in agreement with him you got to be on the same page as him and get your assignment and do it be a part of his life the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. He's asking us. He's coming, and he's asking you to do as well before he gets here so he doesn't have to say, I didn't know you. So he doesn't have to say, take the good for nothing um, person and throw him off into the outer darkness, darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Either you're for him or you're against him. And if you're against him, you're for the enemy. And the enemy is God's enemy. you got to make a choice. you got to make the choice. So let's acknowledge him, Jesus. We thank you and praise you for showing us truth, telling us things to come, warning us. We, we want to know your wrath here and now, not when it's too late. Coming to you for correction. Show us where we're missing it. Show us our sin. We love you and praise you and give you all the glory. Let him show you your sin now before it's too late. This is a time of grace, and on that day it'll be too late. If you said that prayer, I would be so excited if you let me know. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today.